Once again, you are welcome to our devotional series, Encountering the God Who Sees. The title of our lesson today is, When Death Strikes. Bible reading is coming from 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 17. Let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, one more time, we are thankful for the privilege of worship. As we open your word, may your Holy Spirit guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am reading from the New King James Version, and the Bible says, Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick, and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Of the three people in the house, the son fell sick and died. The woman had every evidence of God's presence and blessings, yet the son died. It was a severe test of her faith in the God who sees. Sorrow and death, dear friends, come to the homes of the righteous and the wicked, the married and the single parents. The death of the son was a double blow to the widow. Not only did she suffer as any parent who loses a child suffers, but she also suffered as one who lost her only hope for the future. The expectation was that her son would grow and provide for her in her old age. Now, that expectation was shattered. It appears he was her only child, the comfort of her widowed. Like the story of the widow of Nain in Luke chapter 7 verse 12, this was the only son of his mother, and she was a widow for that matter. The tie between a mother and a child is perhaps the closest of all blood relationships. And the tie was stronger in this case because they had suffered together during their time of hunger. The child was fed miraculously and yet that did not secure him from sickness and death. The abundance of meal and oil and the honor of the prophet's presence were as nothing while the child lay dead in the house. Dear friends, we must not think it strange if we meet with very sharp afflictions, even when we are in the way of duty and of outstanding service to God. Yes, friends, when death strikes, especially that of a loved one, it darkens the whole life, quenching all the other joys that we have been experiencing. I have personally experienced it, and I believe there is someone like me who has gone through such pain. My firstborn son, aged 37, died 10 years ago, leaving behind two boys. Dear friends, death is painful. What lessons are we learning? Number one, death affects all of us. It was an event that affected both the mother and the prophet. Number two, this sudden turn of events, the death of the son, was not an accident in God's perspective because nothing takes him by surprise. Number three, this world is not yet hidden before the fall of man or are we experiencing the millennium in heaven? We should never expect pain-free life in a fallen world. We all experience pain. Pain when your child fails to make it in academic pursuits, pain when your child becomes a drug addict, and pain of losing your child through death. The good news is, we read in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, a very comforting promise. The Bible says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Oh, dear friends, recovering from the pain of losing a child to death may take long. But our consolation is that time is coming when there will be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. Indeed, there shall be no more pain and no more death. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, what a consolation to know that soon and very soon 
when you come in the clouds of heaven, there shall be no more pain and no more death. Till then, keep us strong, keep us faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Till then, dear friends, experience the comfort of encountering the God who sees even when we lose our loved ones. Could be parents, could be your spouse, could be your child, could be your friend. Till then, hold on to your faith. Amen.